Ethereum Merge, it's in the buzz once again because very recently Ethereum finished its second of three major merge tests. This was on public test network Sepolia. So let's understand what is this merge. Ethereum explains it like this. The merge represents the joining of the existing execution layer of Ethereum, which is the mainnet, which with its new proof of stake consensus layer, that's the beacon chain. So it's the merger between Ethereum's mainnet and the beacon chain proof of stake system. This means proof of work for Ethereum will end and the blockchain will shift to proof of stake mechanism. But proof of stake, what's that? Well, that uses randomly selected miners to validate the transactions. Whereas proof of work uses a validation method to confirm transactions and add new blocks to the blockchain. It is more or less like a competitive method. The first node or miner to solve the puzzle is given a chance to add new blocks in the blockchain. But why is proof of work not energy efficient? As the number of transactions in the blockchain increases, the computational power required to solve those puzzles also increases. So high computational power is equal to increased energy consumption. Hence, Ethereum wants to move to proof of stake. Now comes a very important question, which is how are they doing it? Well, they launched a parallel proof of stake network, Beacon Chain, to test the proof of stake consensus process staking. It's separate from the Ethereum minute and is meant to be a network of stakers only. They say the merge will eliminate the need for energy intensive mining and instead secures the network using stake Ethereum. See, when stakes are high, you can't immediately make changes to your existing network or chain. So that's how they're doing it. You see the diagram, you have a minute and then uh, along with it, there is beacon chain and that's how they're bringing the change and that's how they're eventually merging it. But as I told you in the beginning, there are total three tests that they're going to conduct. The third one is yet to happen. The final trial of the merge is set to occur on the Gorelli network over the next few weeks before the official merge on the Ethereum minute can be given the go ahead. But what do you need to do if you are an investor? Well, Ethereum says you do not need to do anything to protect your funds entering the merge. No action is required to upgrade on your path. More details will be discussed with our guests as well as we have with us Rohas Nagpal, Chief Blockchain Architect, Hybrid Finance Blockchain, that's Hi-Fi and Srijan Bhardwaj, Serial Entrepreneur. Both of you are very warm welcome. So, of course, uh, a quick reaction from both of you on this merge. We'll start with Rohas. Uh, sure. So, as we all know that after this merge, Ethereum is going to move on to the proof of stake, which is supposed to be 99% better from the environmental point of view. Yeah. But if I'm very honest, I am very apprehensive about this happening. See, in the world, when we look at it, proof of work is the only consensus mechanism that has been tested vigorously. For the last 10 plus years, Bitcoin has been running on it, Ethereum has been running, and many other chains are running. Sure. And all the hackers in the world have tried their best to break it and they have not succeeded. Now, we don't know once it goes into proof of stake, how strong that is going to be. So, personally, I am very apprehensive about this migration. I have some counter questions, but uh, before that, uh, Srijan, uh, what, what is your thought on it? I definitely agree with Rohas and I also understand where the whole idea for proof of stake is coming. People say that the transaction fees is really high, the network gets congested and that is why Ethereum developers chose proof of stake. But I definitely agree that proof of stake is a newer way to make sure that the transaction and everything on the network gets consensus. So it's going to be a little tricky to see how proof of stake actually rolls out. Okay, uh, as both of you have pointed a very similar point, uh, Rohas, as you said, that, you know, you're not very confident on proof of stake, but every time there's an environmental concern that arises out of Bitcoin or other controversies like these, you know, experts have pointed, okay, proof of stake is probably one solution. If, if, if this is not ideal, what is the solution then? Uh, that's a very good question and I don't really think environmental concerns should be the factor based on which we make such a major decision. Mm -hmm. Because if human beings want to actually cut down on environmental damage, then I think most of what we do should stop. You know, whether it is from the clothes we wear, I mean the fashion industry consumes so much of energy. So I don't think that is the correct way to think when we are talking about a security issue on such a multi-billion dollar platform. So I think that's the wrong way of looking about things. I mean, we could say the same thing about banks. 
banks have employees who travel in ac cars go to ac offices take flights has anyone ever calculated that and come to a conclusion banks should be shut down so i don't think this is the right way to think about it that's my personal opinion okay but why do you why do you think the merge has taken this long why why is it taking so much of time because it's a very very complicated technological change i mean we are trying to completely redefine the way in which the blockchain platform is running see mm. initially bitcoin did all the tweaks and became very very solid ethereum could then carry on with the learnings of bitcoin now what we are trying to do is make everything again from the ground up and that is why i am very apprehensive that it is probably not going to be a good decision okay so what very is one, complicated tech what is one quick concern you have uh, shrijan on this so my quick concern is like imagine you are driving a car and suddenly you want to upgrade your car and now you don't want the car to stop and you want the upgrade to be done in a moving car so what basically is happening with ethereum is that ethereum has already grown to a level and now the world wants that you should do the merge but all the roll ups and all the new stuff that is coming on for ethereum has only been tested on the test net we have not really practically brought it so this is why it's very risky in my opinion but then their explanation is that you know that's why we have a i mean another chain simultaneously running with it so that it's less risky and of course we have to remind ourselves that ethereum is the second largest uh, cryptocurrency after bitcoin so definitely it's a huge task but rohas would you would you agree with their uh, justification or explanation that they offer no because the test nets are not identical to the main net so it is still a kind of a simulated situation but the mainnet has a lot of different things which testnets don't have so no i don't agree with that logic and and what happened to ethereum 2 h2 actually it's the same thing i mean eth2 is just the new version of ethereum so to say hmm. so all this is heading towards that direction and it is not just this merge it is also sharding and a few other changes which will come together and the final version that we see is kind of what we can call as eth2 it's the same thing it's the same thing. and do you think there will be a price pump after the merge uh you mean to say the eth prices yeah uh well in all likelihood people who are not technology people working on ethereum will want to have a higher price but honestly i will tell you as a developer that if the price goes up more and the transaction fee is expensive as a developer i will not use ethereum anyway we are so many of us have shifted to other blockchains so i think a price pump would actually be bad for ethereum Okay, Shrijan. Let's say okay, this merge actually uh, goes as as per their plan. What is the what is one that well, one challenge which you think they'll still face even after a successful merge? So there are three things that Ethereum 2.0 is trying to solve. One is scalability. Then the other is that they want to make it more secure and more sustainable in terms of energy. So I think doing all three of these at the same time is going to be tricky because right now Ethereum can handle 15 transactions per second, and the idea is to make it and scale it to 1,000 transactions per second. At the same time, we are moving it from proof of work to proof of stake, and then we are also bringing other mechanisms like sharding and all the rollups, and then all the future L2s that are planning to merge once all of this is done. So this is why I'm a little apprehensive that so many things are going so. my mind calculates is as a probability decision where every single thing has to go right in order to make sure that this is a success and and then a lot of experts have also been pointing out that sharding would be a very big challenge why do they say that absolutely so sharding in its very basic sense is that if you have a huge database you basically distribute and divide it into smaller databases sure. just so that you can work around efficiently so if you go through and read all the stuff that the developers have written about sharding what they are trying to do is that they are trying to create 64 new shards or 64 new chains and initially only a small subset of data would be stored rather than each node having data of all the other nodes so this is why sharding is being seen as something which is very i would say uncertain right now in terms of whether it would actually be really useful for the ethereum mainnet or not Last quick question from Rohas: uh, Do you see any new use cases of Ethereum after the merge? Uh, no. So then, uh, what is expected is that Ethereum would be faster and cheaper. So the use cases I believe would still remain decentralized finance and smart contracts, but hopefully they would become cheaper and faster. Sure. Thank you so very much for joining us for this conversation.